Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, we're going to be retoothing this dovetail saw. Hope you enjoy. So when it comes to refiling the teeth, first you have to decide how many teeth prints you want to have. Now, I have a tenon saw here that's got about 14 or 15 teeth prints, and I have this other tenon saw here that's about 12 teeth prints. Now, I'm going to be doing 12 teeth prints on my dovetail saw here because that's what I like and that's what I've worked with and it works really well. But you can see that there's quite a difference between the 14 teeth print and the 12 teeth print. So this tenon saw has 14 teeth print and you can see they're actually quite small. And then there's this one here at 12 teeth print and you can see that there's, there's quite a difference between the size of the teeth. I like about 12 teeth print because it's the perfect tooth amount I find for rip cutting and cross cutting even with a tenon saw and it just works well for me. Now, cross-cut saws generally have more teeth per inch, but I find that 12 teeth per inch works quite well for both rip and cross-cut saws. So today, we're going to be doing 12 teeth per inch. We'll go ahead, take the handle off, and get straight to it. Whack the saw plate straight in like this, clamp it to the, the back, and then we run the file through like this. Now you're trying to keep that flat as you're coming through just to guide it. And while you're doing this filing, just make sure you have complete control over the file and the teeth because you don't want to cut yourself. So just be careful. Now it doesn't take too long to remove these teeth, but you have to keep going until you've taken everything down to smooth metal right the way across. So if you've got different size teeth, which this saw plate does, which is why I'm refiling it. You just need to keep working on it until you get right down to the bottom of all the gullets. So if we look at the saw plate here now, showing those uneven teeth is that we're already getting down to bare metal here, but we've still got quite large teeth at this back end and through the middle. So you just got to keep going. So now that I've filed that off, I want to put my saw into my saw holder piece of wood. So I want to set it loose like this. And I want to bring this flush with my ruler. Just to the right height. Lock it in place. Now, as we're doing every two millimeters, I'm going to use one of these fine permanent markers and we're going to put a mark on the saw plate every two millimeters. You can see just here, we're going to mark every two millimeters. So now that we've done this, we come in and we take our file. And we make a little mark, a little file mark on the top of each of these dots. And once we've done that, we can come back and start refining these or shaping out these teeth. Now these are still going in with the top of the file flat and when I start going into the next, when I come through the next time I'll start rotating it to do the proper rip tooth. So now they've gone through and you can see these marks along here, it is almost the same as just sharpening the saw now. But we still have to define from these points the teeth a little bit better. So what I'm going to be doing, is, as this is a rip cut, so I'm going to be bringing this in at 90 degrees, doing two runs, and I'm going to keep going until I see the tooth looking like it's looking like a sawtooth. And then we'll come back through and do the final refining, which revive, involves sharpening on both sides. But for now, I'm going to be coming in like this. And you can see we're starting to get a tooth. 
So we're going to run right through the entire saw, bringing our little teeth in like this. If you want to know the difference between rip cut and cross cut, I have some videos like that, so I'll leave them in the description below where I sharpen a rip cut and also a cross cut saw. But again, I'm just doing two runs through. So we can see that some of these teeth are fairly even. Some of them are a little bit larger than others, which is just inevitable when you're doing this by hand because things don't go 100% the way you would like. But now the process is to come back through here and make sure we have none of these white spots on the top, filing both sides of the teeth. So we're going to be running this side and this side of each tooth until the flats disappear. Some of them already have the flats gone, so we don't have to worry about those teeth. You can even bring out permanent marker in at this stage if you need to, to make it easier to see the flats, which I quite often like to do at this stage because it can be quite difficult on the shiny versus the shiny to actually see where the flats are and where you've actually filed. And yes, some of these gullets are lower, however, that's just part of doing it by hand. They're not going to be 100% perfect, but the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it, and the better the, the result's going to be. So you saw how I worked the teeth there on both sides until that flat on the top was gone. Now, obviously, this is not ready to be used. We would still have to go ahead and do the normal sharpening process, which you can see in the video that I've got in the description below, how we obviously joint it, sharpen the teeth, and then set the teeth. But let's see what this can do, just with the, sh the teeth reprofiled on there. There you have it folks, as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward process, if not a little time consuming and a bit monotonous. But as you can see, just with brief profile and teeth, without any set, without a final sharpen, that we can get some good curves that are nice and clean on a piece of wood, which means that you're already ahead from the teeth that were already on there, especially if they were all different sizes and you were missing some teeth. So, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, checking out my Facebook, Instagram and Patreon pages, and as always, check out these great videos on the screen for you right now to help you with your woodworking journey. Bye for now.